and yet another video of Lobotomy Corporation and again yet another special video I think since today there will be no gameplay no get comfortable you know grab your phone or I don't know maybe you're watching this on your desktop PC go into full screen or just leave it on in the background it doesn't really matter for today's episode maybe you should grab a tea or some hot chocolate or maybe a coffee or something anyway as I say get comfortable today we'll read some stories which is the actual reason why I asked you for SCP stories last time but before we get to the SCP stories some of you kind abnormality or employee viewers depending on what you identify as provided we'll read the few I think I'm still missing in my department which would be the old crazy granny the old lady story time maybe I shouldn't say story time every time today because I would be saying it a lot it takes the shape of an old and feeble elderly person when anyone enters its chamber the abnormality would talk to that person it differs from time to time but it always starts with child child do you want to hear an old story the story could be a lullaby an unspecified poem a common child story or something entirely new it knows every child's story and does not stop telling stories until its listener leaves is this a good or a bad thing excerpt from interview log employee f5049 she may be the loneliest creature of all abnormalities the creature is filled with loneliness she's telling those tales to fill the void a story needs a listener when someone is in her room she will try to fill that void of course listening to her is very dangerous she knows all the stories on earth and even the ones that don't exist our mind wouldn't be able to cope with all that she could fry our brain in a mere instant oh look at her i mean her face a little bit looks like the old troll face but other than that i think she's fine next on the scorch girl i'm not sure if i read this already or not so let's just fucking read it again an abnormality in the form of a burnt girl even if there's nothing left to burn the fire engulfing her does not extinguish a match has impaled a girl like a steak oh i didn't even notice but it is like this they're right the match is usually burned and the abnormality does not show any signs of distress some even speculate that the abnormality is the match not the girl however there have been recent sightings of the scorch girl weeping excerpt from dr redacted's research log an abnormality specialist the charred body signifies the child's shattered hope while the perpetual fire means her desire for affection she's always struggling between the two damn we paid a boatload for this rubbish who paid what for an abnormality now of course i know by now that there are several origins for abnormalities and i guess one of them is we find them in the wild and the other one is we make them ourselves employees conversations she's like a ticking time bomb it's difficult to know if she's in a good mood or not just like any girl really we just pray to the god that it's not me before entering the containment unit she won't get better we can only stop her from getting worse all right employee m 3923s counseling log i never thought the abnormality would be able to escape maybe we were getting careless but it seemed that all it could do was just burn up the match in its body yes our response was a bit late i'll met that most abnormalities that try to escape would attack the employees in front of them but they didn't show any aggression towards the employees nearby instead it headed to a different department the most crowded place in the company if we didn't suppress it at the door half of the people here wouldn't be alive today this happened to me before but now that i know how to deal with it it's not too bad anymore um i think i've read all of them of course i'm missing some stuff about where the fuck is where the fuck is arion she's down here right i still miss some stuff about arion i still miss observation level four i thought about maybe going in game and unlocking oh three and four apparently no 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 four 
Um, I thought about going in-game and unlocking that shit, but considering that I'd have to deal with <laughs> um, the abnormality itself again, which is just horrible, I didn't want to do it, so you'll get Arian's story another time. It's just that these days I don't really have time to read the abnormality story, so I thought I would get um, get on with it and maybe get on a level where I can say, okay, now I only have one or two left of them. Anyway, one of them I'm still missing has to be the Beauty and the Beast, I think. I don't think I've read this one. An abnormality that loathes itself, howling in despair. Sounds like me. It tries to lift the curse in vain. Beauty was once a fair lady with charming green eyes. One day, this poor lady learns of a job opening at the manor of the Count. The Count looks monstrous. Anyone who dared to enter his manor is never seen again. A hideous monster must be preying on people. She brought a very sharp knife with her. The lady was hired and worked at the manor. Contrary to the rumors, she found no traces of a monster. Sometimes at night she could hear voices. It was a very kind and it was very kind and wanted to compensate for her trouble sensibly. You know, sometimes it's not the game that's written iffy, it's me just being too retarded to read, so I apologize. Walking in a manner the lady became greedy. If the count is gone, I could take his possessions for myself. One day she went inside the Count's room, the room which she was instructed never to enter during the day. There she saw the Count's true form. He was a hideous monster. Several hundred eyes, four legs. He was neither human nor animal. The lady thought, well, guess I'm dead now. <laughs> no, she thought, perhaps the world will be better off without such a hideous monster. She stabbed the beast with her knife. Surprisingly, the beast laughed at the last moment. Even before the lady could ask why it is laughing, she began to change. Hundreds of eyes formed, and a thick coat of fur grew in her. Soon, she turned into the beast. Now the manor and all its riches belongs to her. There's a rumor that all who enter the manor vanish into thin air. Hmm, after reading the story now, I liked Beauty and the Beast a little bit more. It's still a shit abnormality though, but the story is pretty cool. I wish it was a little bit longer, but I can get the meaning behind it. I mean, Beauty and the Beast uh, devours when you trigger its fail state, right? It straight up just kills the employee and, and they're gone or something. Anyway, with this... That's it. We're done with the Lobotomy Corporation. I'm sorry, no gameplay, just stories. And we'll go on with SCP stories. So if you only like Lobotomy Corporation, now is the time to turn off the video. Don't forget to like it though. And, you know, leave a like, hit subscribe, smash that bell. No, don't. But maybe stay for the SCP stories. I think they're, they're pretty good. I only skimmed through them. Magic of Editing. Go! Here we are, the SCP Foundation. I think it's the first time in at least a decade that I opened up this site. So I ask you guys to give me your favorites, your SCP stories you like the most or think are the creepiest or something. And I remember seeing this picture before, so I must have, I must have come across it by chance before. At least I think. Let's see. It's the item SCP-184, a Euclid object class. And SCP-184 is not to be contained in any structure. SCP-184 is to be attached to a high power electromagnet at all times. Should the electromagnet fail, agents are to report to SCP-184's containment area and prevent access to all unauthorized personnel until the electromagnet is restored to power. I wonder why. The containment area for SCP-184 is currently configured to resemble a park, with SCP-184 and its containment magnet disguised as statuary. Any and all visitors are to be monitored. Any structures affected by SCP-184 are to be demolished after review by... Redacted, I guess. Final demolition approval or inclusion into SCP will also be determined by this body. 
No investigation is to be done into affected structures without approval and the res rescue team on standby. Let's read the description. SCP-184 is a small, smooth metallic object, 10 cm tall and 10 cm wide, in the shape of a dodecahedron, which is this. I won't even try to describe. It's five, five sides, I guess that's what it means. Each face of the figure has a circular hole in the center, and a small sphere is attached to each vertex. SCP-184 is made of an unknown but highly magnetic alloy about as hard as brass. When inside an enclosed structure, SCP-184 expands the structure's inner dimensions without altering its outer dimensions. SCP-184 will increase the inner dimensions of any enclosed structure by several hundred meters each day. Wow. Beginning one hour after entry into the structure. Initially, SCP-184 only extends the walls out, causing rooms to become much larger without adjusting the height of the room. This expansion continues until the original dimensions of the room have been tripled. At this point, SCP-184 starts creating wholly new rooms. SCP-184 is apparently able to copy items from inside the structure, creating furnished rooms consistent with the rest of the structure. After a period of time, however, the expansion process appears to break down. For example, items will be made from inappropriate materials, glass books, a wooden microwave, rooms will be oddly shaped, doors will open into blank ha walls, and hallways will be tiny or twist back around in long mazes. The new inside structures continue to be more and more odd, while the outside remains unchanged. This behavior is most dramatically illustrated in homes. However, it has been observed in other instances, including a cardboard box. Jesus Christ, how would a cardboard box even manage to uphold its own structure? I mean, you can only make them that big before they just crumple together on their own weight, right? The changes do not go away with the removal of SCP-184, but no additional structures are created. Wait, they don't go away? That's infinite room! What happens if you take this thing outside? Let's read on. Addendum 1841, notes from Dr. Redacted. I don't think I need to stress the fact that this thing can never be allowed into Site-19. We may need to look into different containment at some point, but for the time being, we will keep it in the open, immovable and hidden. Just, you know, if this thing starts one hour, after being in a closed room, how do you define a closed room? Could you just have it on... I don't know, on some kind of... movement device that just puts it through box, through box, through box, without it being in there for longer than an hour? So it never has the time to expand? And even if you alternate, alternate between two boxes, does it accumulate? Or does it just... Does it need to be one hour um, at a time? It's weird. There, it's uh, SCPs are just some weird thought experiments, and while I do appreciate the creativity, especially behind this whole room expanding thing, it's you can break it down pretty easily sometimes. Locations of interest. It is currently her professor hypothesized that SCP-184 or an anomaly. Fuck me. Why do I make a special about reading stuff if I'm too dumb to read any of it? Or an anomaly with a similar effect may be responsible for the creation of locations of interest such as Bector Soho or Shugoku Cellar. Investigation into SCP-184 as a potential origin for these spaces is ongoing. So these are other SCPs, I guess. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um. Notes on recovery. SCP-184 was recovered in the Kavloon Walled City in June of... Redacted. Reports of the city's bizarre and explosive growth attracted operatives who soon learned of SCP-184, held in the possession of Data Expunged. After several police crackdowns, Mobile Task Force Zeta-9 was dispatched and recovered SCP-184 with minimal losses. Minimal losses? Okay. The final effect of exposure to SCP-184 on both the city and inhabitants may never fully be understood due to the reckless actions of local law enforcement. 
which destroyed several affected sections of the city before operators could take action to prevent it. Interviews with residents yielded minimal information, with a communal wall of silence being the major response. A few documents indicated that SCP-184 could be brought into a home and allowed to affect the dwelling for 50 pounds sterling per half hour. These documents were unconfirmed by residents. So they basically sold this thing to people so they could enlarge in the home. It's, it's a weird thing, definitely. SCP-184. Um, it kind of reminds me... Uh, do you guys know the book House of Leaves? It's a really weird fucking book and I haven't finished it yet. I got it last year for Christmas. Still haven't finished it, especially since I bought it in English and you should know that English is not my first language and it's a really complicated book. I want to finish it soon though, it's really creepy, it's really weird to read. I can only read it in short bursts because it drives you mad somehow. <laughs> It's really unsettling. Definitely, definitely a recommendation by me though. House of Leaves, check it out. SCP-1471, another Euclid. And immediately, last image received by SCP-1471, 9405 before being rendered inoperative. It looks, it looks cute, really. You want to pet it, don't you? All mobile devices that have SCP-1471 installed are to be confiscated and analyzed for any potential leads to other possibly affected devices. Afterwards, affected devices are to have their batteries removed, be assigned a designation, and be placed in storage unit 91 at research site 45. All online application stores for mobile devices are to be monitored to prevent any inadvertent sales of SCP-1471. Suspected devices are to be targeted using self-uploading malware in order to disable the device until it can be seized by field agents. Sometimes I think the special containment procedures should come after the description, because I think this thing does something with cameras. But you wouldn't really know after just reading this. So let's get on to the description. SCP-1471 is a free 9.8 megabyte application for mobile devices named MALO version 1.0.0 in online application stores. SCP-1471 has no listed developer and is somehow able to bypass the application appro approval process to go directly to distribution. SCP-1471 is also able to avoid removal by other program manager applications. It's a virus. Okay. After SCP-1471 is installed, no icons or shortcuts are created for the application. SCP-1471 will then begin to send the individual images through text messaging every 3 to 6 hours. All images will contain SCP-1471. A. I guess. <laughs> will contain SCP-1471A, either within the background or foreground. SCP-1471-A appears to be a large humanoid figure with a canid-like skull and black hair. Canid? It's from canine, right? Dog. Damn. Why the fuck am I reading? During the first 24 hours following the installation of SCP-1471, the mobile device will receive images taken at locations commonly frequented by the individual. Oh, that's creepy. It does the images by itself? After 48 hours, the mobile device will receive images taken at locations that were recently visited by the individual. After 72 hours, the mobile device will receive images of the individual in real time, with SCP-1471-A appearing within close proximity to the subject. Individuals with over 90 hours of exposure to these continuous images will begin to briefly visualize SCP-1471-A within the peripheral vision, reflective surfaces, or combination of the two. Continued exposure to SCP-1471 after this point will cause irreversible and sustained visualizations of SCP-1471-A. Individuals at this stage have reported periodic attempts made by SCP-1471-A to visually communicate with them, but fail to understand or comprehend these actions. 
Apparently the only known treatment to reverse SCP-1471's effect is to eliminate the individual's visual exposure to these images prior to 90 hours of installation. To date, no apparent hostile activity has been reported regarding SCP-1471-A. Oh holy shit, I really like this one. It's the right amount of creepy and unsettling. Especially the no hostile activity, it makes it even better. Because I think this thing just wants to live, but it has a weird way of trying to get into the world, really. I really enjoyed that. Oh, thank you for that. And on to the next one. SCP-106. Object class, Cater. I don't know any of the object classes, so is Euclid worse or better than Cater? Is it just um, the SCP itself? Are Cater's humanoids that are existing or something? I don't know. But this thing... This thing looks weird. <laughs> Definitely. Looks a little bit like me, IRL. Um, SCP-106. No physical interaction with SCP-106 is allowed at any time. All physical interaction must be approved by no less than a two-thirds vote from O5 command. Any such interaction must be undertaken in AR2 maximum security size after a general non-essential staff evacuation. All staff, research, security, class D, etc are to remain at least 60 meters away from the containment cell at all times. Except in the event of breach events. SCP-106 is to be contained in a sealed container comprised of lead-lined steel. The container will be sealed within 40 layers of identical material. Each layer is separated by no less than 36 cm of empty space. Support struts between layers are to be randomly spaced Container is to remain suspended no less than 60 cm from any surface by ELO IID electromagnetic supports. This thing sounds dangerous so far. Secondary containment area is to be comprised of 60 spherical cells, each filled with various fluids and a random assembly of surfaces and supports. Secondary containment is to be fitted with light systems capable of flooding, flooding the entire assembly with no less than 80,000 lumens of light instantly with no direct human involvement. Both containment areas are to remain under 24 hour surveillance. Any corrosion observed on any containment cell surfaces, staff members or other site locations within 200 meters that's a big parameter of SCP-106 are to be reported to site security immediately. Any objects or personnel lost to SCP-106 are to be deemed missing killed in action. No recovery attempts are to be made under any circumstances. Note: Continued research and observation have shown that, when faced with highly complex slash random assembly assemblies of structures, SCP-106 can be confused, showing a marked delay on entry and exit from said structure. SCP-106 has also shown an aversion to direct sudden light. This is not manifested in any form of physical damage, but a rapid exit into the pocket dimension generated on solid surfaces. Do we what? <laughs> These observations along with those of lead aversion and liquid confusion have reduced the general escape incidents by 43%. The primary cells have also been effective in recovery incidents requiring recall protocol. Something something something. Observation is ongoing. Description. Finally. Oh my god, this is a long one. Oh god. SCP-106 appears to be an elderly humanoid with a general appearance of advanced decomposition. This appearance may vary, but the rotting quality is observed in all forms. SCP-106 is not exceptionally agile and will remain motionless for days at a time, waiting for prey. 106 is also capable of scaling any vertical surface and can remain suspended upside down indefinitely. When attacking, SCP-106 will attempt to incapacitate prey by damaging major organs, muscle groups or tendons, then pull disabled prey into its pocket dimension. SCP-106 appears to prefer human prey items in the 10 to 25 years of age bracket. Alright, um, <laughs> it's a weird, weirdly specific uh, age bracket really, but how would they... I mean... 
As always, you can ask, how did they find out? And as soon as you do, you'll just get plunged into despair because you don't want to think about the background of how would anyone find out shit like this. Of course, all of this stuff isn't real. I mean, at least I hope so, but yeah. SCP-106 causes a corrosion effect in all solid matter it touches, engaging a physical breakdown in materials several seconds after contact. This is observed as rusting, rotting and cracking of materials and the creation of a black, mucus-like substance. It links me to another SCP with that. Similar to the material coating SCP-106, this effect is particularly detrimental to living tissues and is assumed to be a pre-digestion action. Corrosion continues for 6 hours after contact, after which the effect appears to burn out. SCP-106 is capable of passing through solid matter, leaving behind a large patch of its corrosive mucus. SCP-106 is able to vanish inside solid matter, entering what is assumed to be a form of pocket dimension. SCP-106 is then able to exit this dimension from any point connected to the initial entry point. Examples entering the inner wall of a room and exiting the outer wall. Entering a wall and exiting from the ceiling. It is unknown if this is the point of origin for SCP-106 or simple lair created by SCP-106. So if it can do that, yeah, they need this electromagnetic or rather um, some kind of floating device so the walls aren't all connected by support struts and stuff. Oh, that's... that's dangerous. Limited observation of this pocket dimension has shown it to be comprised mostly of halls and rooms with data expunged entry. Oh, whoa. This activity can continue for days with some subjected individuals being released for the express purpose of hunting, recapture and redacted. Hmm. Addendum. SCP review notes. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> due to the... Let's, let's scroll up a little bit so I don't have to see this fucking thing. <laughs> due to the exceedingly difficult to contain nature of SCP-106, SCP is to be reviewed every three months or during a post-breach incident. Physical restraints are impossible, and direct physical damage appears to have no effect on SCP-106. Current SCP, as of some kind of date, revolves around basic observation and immediate response. Previous, more proactive special containment procedures have been recalled due to the events of breaches. A few of them, it seems like. So, again, I keep questioning what I read. And I think, what if you... Or rather, they had to catch it, right? To contain it. What if you just... You can't crush this thing, since it can disappear in its own pocket dimension, but if you take a sharp blade and put it to its neck, can you just cut off the head? That's mostly the solution for every thing, every monster. And yeah, every monster, let's put it like that. You can kill off a vampire by cutting off the head, you can kill off a zombie by cutting off the head, you can kill a werewolf by cutting off the head, because even with regenerative abilities, the head can't be regained. So I wonder what would happen if you tried to cut off this thing's head. Would it corrode the blade so quickly, suddenly? Even though it usually takes six hours to corrode or something, I don't know. Um, that it would be dull? I don't know. So let's scroll down. And let's have this lovely face on display while I continue reading this. SCP-106 appears to go through long periods of dormancy, in which it will remain completely motionless for up to three months. The cause for this is unknown, however, it has been shown that this appears to be used as a lulling tactic. SCP-106 will emerge from this state in a very agitated state, and will attack and abduct staff and <laughs> cause gross damage to its containment cell at the site and the site at large. Oh, <laughs> I love the gross damage. Fitting for this picture, really. Ah. SCP-106 appears to hunt and attack based on desire, not hunger. SCP-106 will attack and collect multiple prey items during a hunting behavior event, keeping many alive in the pocket dimension for extended periods of time. SCP-106 has no det determinable limit and appears to collect a random number of prey items during an event. The inner dimensions accessed by SCP-106 appears to be only accessible by SCP-106. 
Recording and transmission devices have been shown to still operate inside the dimension, though recordings and transmissions are very degraded. So did they reclaim them? Or does the wireless still work in there or something? It appears that 106 will play with captured prey and appears to have full control of time, space and perception inside this dimension. So it's its own little god. Recall protocol. In the event of a breach event by SCP-106, a human within a 10 to 25 years of age bracket will be prepped for recall, with the compromised container cell being replaced and restored for use. When the cell is ready, the lure subject will be injured, preferably, preferably via the breakage of a long bone, such as femur, or the severing of a major tendon, such as the Achilles tendon. Lure subject will then be placed in the prepped cell, and the sound emitted by said object, subject will be transmitted over the site public address system. Are they really telling me that they are sacrificing someone in the age of 10 to 25? Because if they are, I'm glad. I'm older than that. <laughs> Wouldn't be me. SCP-106 will typically begin to gravitate towards the lure subject within 10 to 15 minutes after hearing the subject. Should it not respond to the initial broadcast, additional physical trauma is to be administered to the lure subject at 20 minute intervals until SCP-106 responds. Multiple lure subjects may be used in the case of major breach events. It will typically enter a dormant state after finishing with a lure subject. In addition, subjects may die, I guess. They may not die, they most definitely will. Now what's this? It's H and something something after release by SCP-106. Subject had been missing for two hours. Subject remained alive for one hour after release. It's scary since I don't know if this is a real picture or not. And there are some things that can cause both that. Sad. But on to the next one. SCP-3008. Another Euclid. The retail park containing SCP-3008 has been purchased by the Foundation and converted into site something something. All public roads leading to or passing by the site have been redirected. The entrance to SCP-3008 is to be monitored at all times and no one is to enter SCP-3008 outside of testing as permitted by the senior researcher. Humans exiting SCP-3008 are to be detained and then debriefed prior to the administration of amnestics. Dependent upon the duration of their stay in SCP-3008, a cover story may need to be generated prior to their release. Any other entities exiting it are to be terminated. Okay, let's read the description for this one. I can't quite tell what this is. SCP-3008 is a large retail unit previously owned by and branded as IKEA. Wow, a popular furniture retail chain. It feels like some kind of abnormality every time I go there, yeah. A person entering through the main entrance and then passing out of sight of the doors will find themselves translocated to SCP-3008 slash or rather dash one. This displacement will typically go unnoticed, as no change will occur from the perspective of the victim. They will generally not become aware until they try to return to the entrance. It's a say, space resembling the inside of an IKEA furniture store, extending far beyond the limits of what could physically be contained within the dimensions of the retail unit. Current measurements indicate an area of at least 10 square kilometers. Wow! With no visible external terminators detected in any direction. Inconclusive results from the use of laser rangefinders has led to the speculation that the space may be infinite. SCP-3008-1 is inhabited by an unknown number of civilians trapped within pre prior to containment. Oh god, gathered data suggests they have formed a rudimentary civilization within 3008-1, including the construction of settlements and fortifications for the purpose of defending against 3008-2. What? Two are humanoid entities that exist within one. While superficially resembling humans, they possess exaggerated and inconsistent bodily proportions, often described as being too short or too tall. 
they possess no facial features and in all observed cases wear a yellow t-shirt and blue trousers consistent with the IKEA employee uniform. 3008-1 has a rudimentary day-night cycle determined by the overhead lighting within the space activating and deactivating at times consistent with the opening and closing times of the original retail store. During the night instances of SCP-3008-2 will become violent towards all other life forms within one. During these bouts of violence they have been heard to vocalize phrases in English that are typically variations of The store is now closed, please exit the building. Once day begins, two instances immediately become passive and begin moving throughout one seemingly at random. They are unresponsive to questioning or other verbal cues in the state. Oh, I feel like this is one big jab at IKEA. They will react violently if attacked. <laughs> one is known to have one or more exits located within. Though these exits do not appear to have a fixed position, making it difficult to leave SCP-3008 one in once inside. Using any other door besides the main entrance to enter the structure, breaking through the walls of the retail unit leads into the non-anomalous interior of the original store. That's weird. Since containment began, 14 individuals have managed to exit SCP-3008. Following an extensive debriefing, all individuals have been administered amnestics and released. Oh, a human male exited it, uh, exited it, followed 10 seconds later by an instance of an IKEA employee, oh no! They caught and killed the man, before itself being terminated by armed response personnel. This incident represents the only time an instance of 3008-2 has been seen exiting 3008. A full autopsy on the corpse was performed. See the autopsy log for more details. The man was carrying an IKEA branded journal seeming to document his time in 3008-1. Transcribe below verbal verbatim. Oh, this is too long. I won't read this, but if if you uh, like this little description of SCP-3008, um, do read the transcription ah, transcription of the journal recovered from Incident 3008-1. Damn, I like stuff like this. It's again not too creepy, but really unsettling since it's to do with real life stuff, and I don't like IKEA. Gotta admit. Alright, I think this will be the last one. SCP-2875. Another cater one. A perimeter is to be established two kilometers from the center of... Somewhere in... Uh, Wisconsin, I guess? And no non-foundation personnel are to pass this limit. Mobile Task Force Lambda 2! That's me. Uh, Chain Gang is to oversee containment of SCP-2875. Updated containment procedures. Due to recent findings, only MTF Lambda 2 approved equipment is considered acceptable, acceptable to dispatch SCP 2875A instances. Mm -hmm. Under no circumstances are any personnel to attempt to dispatch an instance of A with a firearm, incendiary device, or other unauthorized implement. So. SCP-2875-A is a cute brown bear? SCP-2875 is a phenomenon occurring only in the town of somewhere in Wisconsin. At noon every three days, between 50 to 100 fully grown adult Ursus Arctus Horribilis mainland grizzly bear would appear throughout the town. These instances are not anonymously strong or fast, or anon anonymously hostile. This is such a weird word, I'm sorry. Um, and will generally act like any other member of the species given the situation. The phenomenon appears to be cumulative. The instances will linger around the town center for a short time before dispersing, and more instances would appear three years later. Due to the potential scaling issues of the bear population growth, it has become imperative to dispatch the new instances as quickly as possible. Can you eat them? Because if you can, 
It's a renewable source of food. Currently the only feasible means to dispatch SCP-2875-A instances is by using a highly concentrated aerosol tranquilizer spray and then a blunt instrument with which to cause trauma to the cranial region. As killing any of the instances, using a firearm or incendiary device results in two new instances appearing next to the corpse. What? Of the deceased instance. Out of thin air? As such, only foundation standard motorized blunt force devices have been permitted for use against the instances, with other blunt or bladed weapons being permitted per MTF leader instruction. It's a weirdly specific way to kill it, again. Weirdly specific, but I guess it took them a while to find out. SCP-2875 was discovered by Foundation containment teams sent to investigate reports about the sudden disappearance of an entire town of people. Upon arriving there, the situation quickly became apparent when the town was observed as being flooded with A instances. Initially, the containment teams had prepared to move all of the instances to another, or rather to other habitats outside of there, but when the recurring nature of SCP-2875 was discovered, the current containment, containment procedures were established. MTF lead note. I know plenty of you think that this is some kind of joke, but the town of constantly appearing bears is serious. <laughs> it is. Can you imagine what would happen to the local ecosystem if we let this thing go? It was like a goddamn bear arena when we first rolled in, and that was only after a few days. How do they know how long this thing has been going on, and why did it suddenly start? Collected voicemails. The following voicemails were recovered from a mobile device found in a cave. The owner of the device has not yet been verified. Voicemails. Good. Because my voice is slowly dying. <laughs> One of the reasons I didn't properly record today was because of my voice. I don't know why I got the idea that I should record me reading stories then, but I think I'm dying, guys. <laughs> I'm slowly dying. Let's listen to these voicemails. Oh, hey, uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this is Tom Miller from, uh, from City Hall, and um, just uh, wanted to get in touch with you about some, some things you were saying the other day at the, the old town meeting. Uh, so give me a give me a call back here for too long. The number is eight seven five seven one one two, and uh, I'll uh, talk to you then. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, this is not interesting at all. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's Tom Tom Miller Hi, Tom. again uh, from from City Hall, and uh, just uh, wanted to get back in touch with you about some things things we talked about the other day. And, uh, uh, you know, I've been thinking about, about what you were saying about the pest problem with the coyotes. And uh, I really do think uh, bears is the way we want to go. So, um, let me know when we can talk about that. Get some plans laid out. You know, my number is 875-7112. And we'll talk more then. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, so they thought bears would be a solution? <laughs> Apparently not. Hey, it's, uh, it's Tom Miller again. Hey, uh, just uh, wanted to let you know, bears is uh, is, is going great. Uh, we, we haven't seen any any coyotes around in a, in a little while, so that's 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 good. Uh, I do have one question though about uh, about one of the bears getting a little close to uh, to town. Um, one of the one of the gals in town is a little freaked out about it. So if we can talk about that and uh, get some of these details ironed out. I think this is going to be real great. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, oh yeah, uh, numbers uh, eight seven five seven one one two, and uh, we'll talk then. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Why does he need to repeat his fucking number every fucking time? I mean, when the fuck was this that someone didn't just have him saved inside the phone or maybe even written down the fucking number? Hmm. Huh, let's see. Hey there, it's uh, Tom Miller again. Haven't heard from you in a little while, but I uh, just wanted to let you know, uh, me and some of the guys are a little concerned. There might be a few too many bears. Uh, most of the coyotes, I think, have, have moved on from town, so it's probably probably about time we get the bears out of here. Um, so uh, we've got to do that pretty soon. It's starting to become a little bit of a problem. Um, so give me a call. The number's uh, 
875-7112, and I'll uh, hope to talk to you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye. Okay, listen, there are there are too many bears in town now, okay? We, we just yet, a little boy got attacked just the other day, and the street uh, is with his, with his mom, and he, he got attacked by one of the bears, okay? We gotta get rid of all these, there's, there's, there's too many bears now, okay? I need to get, I need you to call me, please, as soon as you can, so we can do something about, about this, okay? Th thanks, uh, 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 oh, 8757112, uh, uh, call me soon, okay? Thanks, bye. Hmm, I mean, I do get these people are now paid actors or something, so... Uh, the quality of the transcripts may vary. Okay, listen, there is a bear outside of my house, okay? My neighbor just got fucking aided by a bear, okay? There are bears on the streets, there are bears in people's homes, okay? We gotta do something about this. There, there is, I can't get, I can't get outside, okay, my kids are at school, I can't get to my kids, okay, there's a bear I, on my car, why well, can't, oh god, oh lord, there's a bear in the house, oh my god, oh, 875 oh god. <laughs> Gotta appreciate the little comedic note of putting this number in at the end. Oh, I did enjoy that though, and I think it's hilarious that SCPs can just take on different forms, really. And this SCP isn't necessarily the bears themselves, but the appearance of the bears somehow, and they must have... It must be man-made, because given the apparent connection between the town government and the origin of the anomaly, a possible link to SCP-3088 is under investigation. Hmm, creepy, isn't it? Anyway. Damn it. That was certainly something else, and still. At least 50 minutes of episode. I hope you enjoyed that. No progress at all today, but next week we'll continue with the tip of course suppression. And. Maybe another midnight audio? Maybe the same one? Maybe I won't see one at all? I don't know, but I'll try my best to beat it this time. Thank you. And if you didn't like today's episode, I'm sorry, but I wanted to upload something, even though I said I wouldn't upload anything. So you might as well just skip this. But if you're listening to me at this point, either you skipped ahead or you didn't skip it at all, so kudos, you know? Thank you. Bye.